Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Firefly, episode 3 is called Bushwhacked. Why are you smiling? Finally, finally you didn't you didn't drop in the season and, and I could see how it hurt your soul a little bit to not do that. <laughs> but just that hesitation where, where you can just see that pain. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. This is... In many ways, the first proper episode in the sense that the train job was kind of a repilot. Although this one notably adds in more sort of introductory elements that the train job didn't have time to fit in. And yes. uh, namely, this is kind of the introduction that if you were watching it as they aired, this was the intro to the Reavers. Although I actually think this episode plays better if you've already seen the the real pilot. <laughs> okay, that's interesting because... Um... Last uh, last episode, I spoke how there was some elements at the start which I thought were a better uh, way of introdu- uh, introducing things than the than the pilot was. I feel the same about the Reavers here. I think the it's all a lot it's a lot uh, better as an introduction than it, than the relatively clunky thing stuff we got in the actual pilot. I mean, I don't think the stuff in the pilot was that clunky. I do agree it's the one thing that felt like it was maybe too much, but uh, the reason why I say that I think this works even better if you've seen the the, the pilot, if you've seen Serenity, is because you get to a certain point in this episode where I think they don't actually kind of explain what a Reaver is. Not really. Not to the same extent, because in the pilot they clearly define what a Reaver does. They do, yes. Um, and arguably that makes the first half of this episode better because you're not just predicting it when they're going around the ship. But to be yeah, fair... I think, that, I think that's why I prefer this. In the, in the I think it's got a bit more mystique to it. Sure, sure. I I think there's elements that work better, though, and the way that the Alliance officer kind of like, nah, Reavers, that's just a folktale. No, those things aren't real. But we've already seen, you know, episode one. Um, because at this point, because there's no Reavers in this episode much, much, I mean episode 1 has Reavers in it, but episode, but you don't see them, they're just the ship, you just see the ship, yeah. right, so it's all just kind of, they're, they're in there, but we don't know what they look like, and this one kind of gives us a semi-glimpse to what they might look like in that there's a character who kind of starts to try to turn himself into one, but we don't know how yeah. far he got, we don't know if it's accurate, we don't know any of that, which is why the notes I've got down towards the end of the episode this is kind of like, okay, we've still not seen a real Reaver but we have maybe more of an indication yeah. Im- imitation of one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a, a nice build, which again was why I think this works as like a, a second encounter with them. It may be a little bit too early, admittedly, given it's only episode three, but it's just in the mm. sense that, okay, we understand the concept of a Reaver. Oh, now we get kind of a glimpse as to what it. Well, we definitely get the glimpse of what an aftermath of a Reaver attack is. Uh, yeah. I, I think for me, I would actually prefer them the other way around in the sense that this here. You have the mystique. You, you're saying, oh, you know, the Alliance offers like, oh, really, they're just a folk tale, right? And and I kind of like that that we're kind of questioning it, like, oh, is it actually Reavers? It, assuming that you're, you know, you're watching it in that order. And then if you had all the stuff that was in Serenity after this, then it's okay. Now they're actually confronting Reavers themselves, even though we don't see them, we don't know what they look like for sure in there, but um, we've seen the aftermath already. We've seen what they can do, so the fear that they have, I think, would play more genuinely, uh, even more so after we've seen this. Are you trying to argue that you recommend not watching Serenity until no. after the first two episodes? No, I'm not. I would, I would <laughs> never do that. I, I am arguing that this should have just been written differently. <laughs> ba- basically, the stuff in Serenity with the Reavers shouldn't have been in Serenity. And that encounter should have just happened later after this. Is what I'm saying. Okay, okay. I I don't have much of a problem with it as you do, as much as I think it's maybe the clunkiest a, element. I mean, not a problem, but I mean, because I still really like the the escape at the end of Serenity. I do as well. I just don't know if it needed to be Reavers and go through all of the introduction. Mm-hmm. I mean, I understand what the the the, the desire to though. The idea you've got this this double pilot, you want to basically put all the main players on the board right you want to put yeah. the clear the, okay we have to set up the history of of the brown coats and the alliance uh set up the character mal set up what river and simon are doing 
um, and what they're running from and set up the Reavers, right? That is the, the key core things that you need to set up in that first episode. Mm. Um, and sure, there's nothing wrong with leaving one of those things out until episode two or three if you want to. Like, I mean, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I get the desire to at least establish all the main things and then develop them uh, with an episode like this. Uh, so this episode, you know, I, I still think it works very well in the sense that I don't think you even have an indication that it's Reavers until you get a sense of the because because for a long time we just don't think there's anyone on the ship. And they're just sort yeah, of it's like, just derelict. It's right? just derelict, right? And it's just and I think the mystery still works. I don't think it's until you see bodies hanging from the rafters where you go, Oh, I bet this is Reavers. Because yeah. up until that point, it could have been an evacuation for something else. It could have been anything. But yeah, once it could have been uh, it was it Jane's theory, yeah. Guy went mad, killed everyone. But once you see the carnage of them hanging from the rafters, you go, I'm pretty sure it's those Reaver fellas that they mentioned <laughs> back in episode one. <laughs> um and you know, as soon as Mel says, "I know what did this," you get that that sense, and I, yeah. I think uh, that works pretty well. So uh, I got my notes, and we're going to we're going to dive through the the scenes as we do. Does it annoy you a little bit that I kind of forced us to jump to the end of the episode instead of going through your notes? Well, no, because now you just have to do those parts twice. Uh, so Sick. you'll learn your lesson, is what I'm saying. <sighs> trying to give us some you know, natural flow and uh, and you're just like no notes in order is natural thank you very much <laughs> if you say so Chron- chronology is natural <laughs> and i am a custodian of chronology um that was a reference to legends of tomorrow for those of you who didn't catch that <laughs> so if you didn't catch that go and watch it go watch some legends of tomorrow skip season one but watch Legends yeah. of Tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, so we started the episode and they're, they're playing a game. They're playing some kind of basketball-esque game, but it's more just like a hoop that's sort of like dangling in the middle and everyone's just trying to like pass the ball through it. Uh, it's, like a, it's a vertical hoop, though. It's like sort of upright. Um, yes. And so yeah, it looks like a fun game. There, there's some shady tactics. At one point, Kaylee jumps in Jane's shoulders to like get a, a, a dunk, if you want to call it that. And anything goes. Anything pretty much goes. Uh, Simon's sort of watching from above and he's hanging out with an R and... He can't even really tell who you know who's on what side or what the score is or any of these things. Yeah, uh, he's like, he's got no- yeah, he's basically like, yeah, but if if you're not keeping score, then what's the what's the point? And it's like, ah, that's your civilization talking. <laughs> you just just play, you just have fun. Yeah, yeah, just just go with the flow. Yeah, and uh, don't worry about them rules. And Kaylee's wanting to uh, get Simon and once Wash has to leave. Uh, which leads to my first quote of the episode that I really wanted to point out is uh, basically, there's, you know, an alarm goes off, eh, you know, something's happening, distress call, whatever it is. Okay, and, I know what quote this is. And Wash goes, Oh my God, who's flying this thing? Oh, it's me. I'm flying this thing. And he just. <laughs> so... <laughs> come on come yeah, on no, that was pretty good that was gold it's uh tunic's delivery is is uh delightful it's great uh, but of course the game's cut short when a body actually hits the front of the ship uh the windscreen if you uh, do you call it a windscreen in space probably not but you know what i mean viewport i believe is the correct term the main viewport though it's not like like you don't call every window on a ship a viewport though right it's just the the drivers and mm-hmm. uh, the, well, the pilots viewport Yes, because you wouldn't call the the, the 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 car door window the windscreen. No, you would only call. No, the... no, you wouldn't. I I I would call <clears> that <throat> front end one a viewport because that's sure kind of like that's the driver's one. Um, everything else is just a window. But I mean, to be honest, let's, no, no, everything let's... else is a port. A port. Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, if if we're, if we're sticking with ship language, I suppose that is more accurate. But I mean. Let's be honest. Most ships inside they don't have a lot of windows out of the outside of the main one. True, true, not a lot. I mean, I think some of the rooms do. I'm sure I've seen it. There's episodes of this where they're looking through a lot. Uh, of no, no, I'm I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. And just say, as a general rule in most sci-fi, they tend to give you the viewport for your feet where you where your where your pilot's cabin is, in your cockpit, and then that's it. I believe the, the term you, I believe the term you're looking for is bridge. <laughs> cockpit worked i don't think it works but it's a place where multiple people can stand around and there's multiple seats and shit like that that's not a cockpit have 
Have you seen a bloody plane's cockpit? You can get like five, six, seven people in those things. Okay, sure, but that they is not... They have two seats by design. Oh yeah, because there's two pilots, but like, it's not like... This is, a, this is not a cockpit, this is a bridge. There's a difference. No, this is a cockpit. I'm, uh, I'm not standing for this. This uh, is small, it's a cockpit. This is a bridge. I will, I will give you something in, in Star Trek being a bridge because it's a huge open room. This is, they're all cramped in there. There's not that much space for them all to walk. They can't walk around in this room. They're all in there, but there's not, you know, they're not going anywhere. It's a cockpit. What do you think they call it on the show? I don't give a shit. I actually know, but I don't give a shit. They definitely don't call it a cockpit. I can guarantee you that. Do, do they call it a bridge? I'm pretty sure they do call it a bridge. I, I, I recall them then mentioning wrong. bridge. <laughs> it's their ship. It's their future. <laughs> No, they're wrong. How can you say something 500 years in the future is wrong? You don't know what terminology they're using. Things have changed. It's a cockpit. I don't give a shit. It's a bridge. Will you try to look up to prove me wrong? You can't prove me I'm wrong just, with I'm this. I'm trying to just see if they, what they had to use it as. I'm, I'm, I'm not finding much. There's too much text. I'm not reading it all. Just, just you wait. It's at some point casually in the next 10 episodes, someone's going to say something about being on the bridge. And Probably. It's going, wrong. To, it's going to delete me. Because then you're wrong. So they're looking at this ship. It's very Firefly esque in design. It's got a very similar kind of structure to it with the two engines out the side. It's not, it's not the yeah, exact yeah. same ship, but it's a very similar kind of design. Um, it's, it's kind of like um, if you compare it to boats, just like a similar you know model of boat as opposed to like a big cruiser or something like that, right? Sure. Right. It's, yeah. like, it's like another cargo ship, essentially. Uh, yeah. So. You know, and they, 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 they latch on, and there's a debate as to what they should do here, and obviously Book's like, well, we should be good Samaritans, and you know, he's like, sorry, good Samaritan, you know, uh, Captain, he's like, I don't want to hear it, <laughs> Book, I don't want to hear it, and yeah. Jane is, has this theory where he thinks, ah, I bet someone just on board has murdered everyone, that's why there's no life readings, and it's probably yeah, this guy, space it's probably yeah. this guy, yeah, floating around here that's done all the murdering, and everyone's getting all sort of weirded out, and... He doesn't want to do it. He wants to stay away from it. And the captain's like, "No, no, no. well, you know, we'll follow." I agree with Book actually. We're going to go over there and we'll see if anyone needs help. And if everyone's gone, then there may be something valuable to to pick up uh, for some, our troubles. Some plunder may be left behind. Some plunder. And then I noted down uh, Jane sort of like quickly sitting up and going, "Yeah, yeah, someone might be hurt." <laughs> yeah. It's a great line, great, great delivery okay. from uh, from uh, the Baldwin there. Uh, the Baldwin. <laughs> the Baldwin, yes. Well, there's only one Baldwin on the show. Not, not a Baldwin, yes, but sure. <laughs> the Baldwin on Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, River, River uh, hears various scream. Once they're, you know, once they're looking around in the ship and they've got their spacesuits on and they're rummaging around, River like hears screaming at one point and wakes up. Uh, it's quite clear over the course of the episode that River's kind of sensing... Uh, the person they eventually find, they, they, who they, they encounter, yes. uh, but uh, and his head's so screwed up, and that's what she's kind of picking up on psychically. She's picking up on this this fra you know fractured brain that can't process what it's what it's been through. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting, the the one thing, the the one thing I've noted down from this episode and last episode that I feel actually repeats a beat from the from the pilot. Okay, is that. Initially, Simon's going to go over, and Jane's like, "No, if, we need, if they need you, they'll call you, right?" And then Malin and, uh, and uh, Zoe eventually call over and say, "Right, Jane, get get you know, get over here, help us with the goods, blah 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 blah." And Jane tells Simon, "Hey, come on to the ship. You better suit up. You know, you, not much time." And Simon yeah. suits up in the space suit. So he's coming in, and it's it's shot like a horror movie where we're getting a lot of POV through the helmet, and he's just got the flashlight, and it's really dark, and it's all spooky. He turns around a corner as the music's swelling up, and Mal, Zoe, and Jane are just standing there without suits on, just staring at him. And I thought it was very reminiscent of the joke that Mal plays on him in the pilot, where he tells him yeah. Kaylee's dead, and he runs to the the, the, the infirmary, um, and he's just kind of like, uh, and Mal's like, "What are you doing here?" And then Jane just starts laughing, and he gets it immediately. He's like, "Well, fine, you can yeah. help us then." <laughs> Do you know why this works for me, even though it is a kind of repeated joke? Because it's Jane. Well, no, not just because it's Jane, although that helps. Yeah, because um, it's the deck. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's more just the, the concept that, okay, all these guys have been together for a while now and they've kind of got a similar sense of humour. So they're mm. all pulling similar jokes. Like, and they're all kind of, they're, they're quite happy to be dickbags to, to the new guy and, and pull the same sort of pranks on him. 
I could, yeah, I can see that. Uh, no, I mean, it, it, the moment works for me. It was just like watching it and thinking about it critically. I'm like, hey, this yeah. is actually kind of a similar beat to that that joke in the it first is, episode. It is, it well, is. Like, well, so, you, know, you get a bunch of friends together, they'll probably pull fairly similar pranks, right? Yeah, and then there's the sweet moment where Kelly comes up and goes, you've got it on wrong. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the implication being that it wouldn't have actually protected him from anything because he's not put it on properly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good job he learned, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so he's learned a valuable lesson. Uh, so, no, it's just it's a nice enough moment. Um, but yeah, so River actually sneaks on the ship after this, uh, when she's as she's hearing voices and things, and it kind of builds up to Jane being attacked uh, from behind. This guy sort of you know rapidly comes up behind him and attacks him. Uh, yeah, and a it's, big fella, as Jane puts it. Well, I've got, I'm getting to a joke on that in a minute, but <laughs> Malin's only find the bodies. They find the supplies. You know, they find a locked door. And there's a bunch of stuff. It's all these, like, you know, it's food and, you know, basically supplies for like, a colony to, like, you know, set up shop and maybe terraform yeah. or something like that. And then Mal looks up and finds all the dangling bodies. Very alien. You know, it reminded me a little bit, you know, seeing an alien where, uh, uh, was his name, Dallas is, you know, going through the ship and he's looking up at the chains and all that, you know. Yeah, I can see that. It's kind of provoking that imagery, uh, but which is cool. But, you know, there's the fine Jane after he's been knocked out and they're all there and the Simon's there and Jane's like, you know, actually no. There's another line I wanted to put out first. Um, of course, the bloody is. There is now. At one point, uh, there's a lot of chaos as they're finding things, uh, and they're helping Jane. The, you know, after they realize he's been attacked, and Wash hearing all this, sitting at the comms, is like, "What in the hell is going on over there?" And Zoe, you know, just deadpan goes, "Not now, honey," <laughs> and just continues yeah, what she's yeah. doing. Really See, this is the problem with notes. You could have just come back to that at the end of the, the Jane story, but because it's out of order, you you just wouldn't do it. I'm getting that. I'm getting to the Jane thing. So, so yeah, he's like, oh, he was big, he was big, he was big, and then they eventually they, they, they find him like in like the compartment in the wall or whatever, right? He's kind of yeah. shooken up. And they see this this kid who's like maybe nineteen twenty. He's this really skinny little guy, and. You know, Jane's been such a dick to Simon in multiple ways, saying you're not really part of this crew, I don't care what Mal says, plays the joke on him this episode. He just turns to Jane and goes, what a beast. It's a miracle you're alive. <laughs> yeah. I like Jane's response. He looked bigger when I couldn't see him. <laughs> oh, no. It's, jo, 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 just, just to compare that to uh, other reading stuff here, it reminded me a lot of early uh, Buffy, the hit television show, of course, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, where Cordelia would always be really mean to Willow, and there's a couple of lines in season one of Buffy where Willow kind of lets herself snipe back, and it's like really, there's a line in uh, Witch, the third episode of Buffy, where the the witch of the episode has put a spell on Cordelia, uh, it's basically this cheerleader wants to take all the other cheerleaders out of the mix so she gets on the team, or on the squad, sure. uh, but she makes Cordelia go blind, and she almost has this big driving accident in Driver's Ed, uh, afterwards, someone says when they're in the library talks, like, why would they want to harm Cordelia? And without missing a beat, Willow goes, maybe because they met her? And it's like the first, like, remotely mean thing Willow's ever said. Like, she is so sweet and innocent up until that point. This kind of reminded me of that. It was kind of like Simon's, like, what a beast. Like, oh, oh, good. We're back to talking about Firefly. I was making a valid comparison <laughs> between the way Whedon has characterized it's individuals. A very long I was setting up context. Deal with it. <laughs> they love how in depth this is. I mean, we, we've not even put the first one up yet, but they're going to love it when they get to it. <laughs> oh, I hope we, 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 we maybe we'll have like four or five by the time these start going up. I hope they're like, you know, could do with a relaxing a bit, chilling down on all those notes. And, uh, yeah, it's, like, it's too late. I love that Connor's the internet connection buckled between us just as Carl was trying to make his point in there. I'm okay for that to be ineligible. Mm. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, if you want this note format for like uh Trek and stuff, you let me know. If you want me don't, don't no 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 no. Do not give him ideas. If you want me to go scene by scene in like Trek, uh starting season two of next gen, I'll uh I'll listen to you. Um <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, so what we got here next? We got, uh, yeah, so they bring the they bring the dude back out of the ship, right? And they've got him in the infirmary, and yes. Mal, Mal says sedate him, right? And, he, you know, Simon's like, I don't think it's sedate him. Like, you know, he's, like, weary. I, I appreciate that, that Simon does listen, right? You oh, know, he does, yeah. Hmm. 
is is it, it question at first? I oh hey, I'm I'm a doctor, right? You know, thing we need to do. But when it's like no, no, this is an order, he doesn't question it then. Yeah, and I, I like Joe. Joe, it's neat about that moment. though. it goes back to the joke that was played on Mario. He, he's he's been reminded very recently that he, well, he's very good at what he does. He is not as intelligent in the the, the realm of space like these guys are. Yeah. He's he's trusting Mal because he's like, okay, you know better than I do in this case. He I probably has a reason for saying this. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. at this point, you know, Mal's already said, I know what did this. And we don't actually hear them say Reavers, I think, until this scene. Uh, but, you know... No, I think so, yeah. But uh, what I think is interesting, though, because right. uh, he's muttering, like, cattle for the slaughter kind of thing. Or, no, uh, Mal says that about all of them if if you know, the Reavers come back, right? Uh, they want to, you know, get on the ship and get, get the stuff off of it. But what I like is, though, is uh, when he says, you know, sedate, sedate him, uh it's right after he looks at Anara and Kaylee watching through the window. It's when he's looking at them that he's like, he turns around and says, sedate him. Like he's, he's, he specifically looks at those two as being kind of the innocent ones who uh, are, are at more risk than say him, Jane and Zoe, who are all the fighters, who are all the, you yeah. know, the soldiers and mercenaries. Right. Um, and it was kind of sweet because it's it kind, of, it's kind of like last episode where there's that moment where he's actually concerned for Anara's safety where he's like, don't, she, he's like don't leave the ship and he's like oh you're showing you know kindness Mal like uh, you know never, didn't know that you, you had that in you uh, same yeah. thing here like you know Anara and Kaylee are very much the, the more and Book theoretically is although the glimpses we get of Book is that he, well, can, he he's he's shown to be able to handle himself yeah yeah he's de- his past has definitely got some meat in there that's, that's worth talking about um yeah, but there's a very interesting debate here. Before before they break up to do the uh, the the next sort of part of the mission where they're getting the the, the all the goods off, uh, there's a debate here about what reavers are, and one of them says reavers aren't men, and Book says sure they are. Yeah, he's saying you know removed from society and twisted by time, but still men. Yeah, and I think it's this thing where he's not really encountered a reaver yet, and he maybe doesn't quite understand what Mal is, why Mal is so scared. And I think one of the things that's really effective in this episode is how scared Jane is once he knows reavers are involved. Where he doesn't want to go back to the ship, he doesn't want to be involved. He wants to run. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter about the you know the the, loot, the booty. <laughs> he's like, no, leave it. We need to run. Yeah, you know. Uh, Jane, Jane uh, as, as we've established now, is actually a bit of a coward. Yes. Uh, but I like this scene a lot because it's, it's the, the, the debate of what a reaver is, and it, it clearly displays the idea that not everyone is aware of them. Uh, those who aren't are maybe, you know, have this assumption that they can be redeemed or they can sort of win these people back. They're not these savage yeah. monsters. Um, and I think this episode clearly shows, you know, by what this guy they've got in the ship becomes, and this debate here, it kind of clearly defines all those things. Um, but it ends really interestingly where, you know, Book's like, I want to give those people some sort of send-off. I want to give them a funeral. And Mal seems resistant, but ultimately says, you know what, I agree. They do, they do deserve to have, like, some sort of send-off. And he sort of gives, like, Anara and a couple of the others, like, hey, you guys help him with that. And he immediately says that he actually wants them busy while they're doing something else because I don't want them to worry because they've yeah. realized that there's a, a trap where when they locked onto the ship and they, you know, connected up, there is like a reaver trap to keep them locked in. And if they try and disconnect, it'll explode. And the idea is that they'll be trapped there until the reavers come back and they can, you know. It's, uh, you know, easy loot for the reavers. Yeah. Um, but Kaylee, uh, being the great mechanic she is, uh, thinks she can get get around it. So we of have this kind of, we have this kind of montage where she's like underneath the thing, trying to disconnect them, and um, they're they're moving the stuff away as Book and that are given some sort of like you know send off yeah. to the, the the dead. Um, so this is all going on pretty good. It's a nice, nice little montage. It's a nice little bit of tension. It's all it's all going uh, pretty well. Uh, and then we get uh, an alliance ship shows up. The big alliance. Uh... Christ, are we only at that point? <laughs> <laughs> so when the, the alliance are coming and the, it's not clear what they're doing yet and it's like, no, we have to let the alliance board this, blah, 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 blah. And he demands reverence, you know, Simon come here. He's like, Simon, get your sister. And Simon gets scared that they're going to turn them over. That You know, what Jane said last episode, that they're just there for a bounty, that they're just there for yeah. like a, a get out of jail free card when they need to... Uh, and you know the 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 alliance ship is like yeah we're looking for a firefly they might be smuggling these two the, these siblings that we're looking for um 
they he thinks you know Mal's going to turn them over, and it's obviously I think it's pretty clear that it's going to be a swerve that he's not really doing that. That there's something yeah. else to the plan, and ultimately the plan is is that they've got River and Simon in spacesuits just hanging out on the outside of the ship to hide. it properly this time as well. Run it properly. I'm I'm sure they they uh, supervised. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> the the uh, the attire uh, preparations, but. Yeah, and then from there, you know, uh, K- there's a nice little moment with Kaylee actually as they're leaving, uh, as they've been escorted off the ship, because there's, there's kind of a, a dick measuring moment between the Alliance guy and, and Mal, where he's like, oh, we're looking for these uh, these siblings, and Mal's like, oh, there's no kids on board. I didn't say children. Adult siblings. And, you know, Mal Mal's a really good smooth talker where he kind of takes it and just sort of naturally passes it off as that he took it this way, when really he's yeah. just kind of trying to subvert what he's saying. Um. But uh, yeah, there's a little moment where uh, he says like, "Oh, get them off this this piece of junk or whatever, or this junker." And Kaylee's just as she's been driving, like junker. It's like she's ready to throw down. Like she's ready she's to fight this offended, guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here we get this montage of them being interviewed, um, and they're interviewing everyone. And there's a there's a couple of great moments in here. There's a great cut to when the guys interviewing Jane, and Jane's just sitting there with his arms folded, not talking. You can picture him just like eating a leg <clears> of chicken. <throat> <laughs> my favorite one though by far is he's talking to zoe and he's asking questions and he's like oh and the, the pilot's your your husband uh, and he starts asking questions and she's like no we're very private about our personal lives we don't talk about it and it cuts to wash going her legs definitely her legs and then really meet the yeah and then you know when it makes her back and i mean really the whole thing uh what was the question <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up uh, yeah, that was good. it doesn't matter how many times I see this episode I, I'm anticipating that cut every time she says you know we'll talk yeah. about our private life and then he's just like, our legs, definitely yeah, our legs he's so excited isn't he <laughs> he's, he's a proud husband he's a very proud man he is he's proud of his wife uh, so that was really neat but the one thing I noticed here is that Mal's not in this montage. We have Mal's interview separate after everyone else. Everyone else gets interviewed together. You know, he's interviewing Anara. Anara says she's been there for almost a year. Uh, and, you know, it sets up kind of the timeline with that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, why does she want to be there and kind of thing. Uh, and Book as well. And then, but it, Mal's on his own. So, you know, we have that as a montage. And then we have just him and Mal. Because this is the main event. This is the, the one that really matters. Yeah. And I think this this conversation is very interesting because... I think it's there in the first episode if you're really paying attention and looking for it. But I think this is the first one where it outright states that he named his ship after the battle they lost, the 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 war was lost on. Um. Yeah. I mean, we probably heard the name of the valley, and we could put two heard and two the name together. Of the valley when we yeah. were there. Yeah. And and you could link that yourself. I th- I think on a first viewing, you might not necessarily make that connection. You know, you might not realize probably that. Probably not. No. Yeah. Uh, and I think, and again, if if this if you're watching this in the original air date order, this would you you know this would be before you see the pilot. But I think this this does a neat job of sort of really solidifying that that sort of uh, that polarizing nature of it. That you know, because he, he just he outright asked the question, why would you name your ship after the the war that you know the the battle that you saw is the one where you lost the war, where you lost what you were fighting for. Yeah. Um, and it's, 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 it's a big part of the show obviously it's his Mal's kind of looking for a reason again after he's, he's lost his purpose right that's kind of a big thing yeah because that was kind of a surprise so you know we, we lost but that doesn't mean it was wrong yeah and he's because I'm only doing this quote because I, 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 I thought this was very important uh, he, you know especially when you, you were on the wrong side and Mal says it was the losing side I'm not convinced it was the wrong one I'm, yeah. I'm still not convinced it was the wrong one uh, which is a very you know, distinct. There's a very dis- big distinction there. There is, and and I will say my, my paraphrasing just a moment ago was perfectly adequate. I know, but I had it written down, so I thought I'll <laughs> give you the exact line. <laughs> I liked how he said it as well. Okay, all right. I'm not convinced there was. A, yeah, I like that phrasing. Um, so yeah, and then but eventually it comes down to like, okay, um, the the Alliance soldiers with their the starship troopers gear are on board the ship, and the crazy man is woken up. And he's 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 killing you know he, he was actually on the other ship he, they brought him across the other line ship he, he got up got crazy killed a bunch of people and he's made his way back to the Serenity because that's he's basically trying to get home to what he knows and that's where he came from so he uh, runs in there and Mal's like no let go let me go with you I know the ship better than you do and he, you know he refuses to uncuff him he put, he puts his cuffs in front which is slightly better than behind yeah Mal's like oh yeah I'm sure I'll have the advantage now. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he makes Mal go first as collateral and they're kind of running there's a, there's a great moment here actually where uh, Simmer uh, Simmer Reverend Simon uh, <laughs> Simmer that's, that's the short version Simmer uh, they're back on the uh, the ship and Mal's looking around and he like steps through the door next to the uh, the galley and he looks over at the side and, and they're both like they're just hiding up against the wall and he's like no, yeah. nothing here <laughs> Nothing here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, eventually the guy shows up and Mal kind of saves his ass and that's ultimately what lets them go. They don't let him keep the goods, of course, um, but it's this idea that, you know, he's basically becoming a, 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 a reaver because that's the only way he can process what's happened to him is to become it. Because he, he, yeah. he can't go over it. He, he's, he saw these people kill, rape, and eat. Like, and, people and it, he knows. And it makes you question... Did he survive, or did they, you know, or did they let him survive? So you know, to bolster their ranks. You know, we always yeah. know that they yeah. intended to come back anyway to see if the trap caught anyone, right? Yeah. So did they intentionally leave him there and, and know this would happen and be like, right, okay, that's another one for us? I think I think that's a very strong possibility. I think it's the sort of thing that we don't ever really get answered because obviously we only have the fourteen episodes in the movie. Yeah. Uh, but because obviously when we get to the end of it, we'll know what created the Reavers, but we don't necessarily know if they did actually try to expand their ranks. And I think this episode yeah. implies that maybe they did. Uh, yeah, because we know they're trying to expand their territory from mm. Sereni. Uh, from the first episode, that, that was very clear that they're, they're you know, coming further and further into Alliance space all the time. And um, so, I mean, that, that implies they need more bodies. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it makes sense, yeah. It makes sense if they have this tactic of creating new recruits, essentially. Um and but no i, I kind of like the, the the going back to the debate about like are reavers still people i like this like what we see after this kind of proves mal right that no they're gone like is yeah it, you know like you, again you could almost correlate it to like in buffy when they lose their soul but this is kind of like the more visceral version of that where they're just that broken like they just get yeah. warped that much um, I think comparing it to Buffy is doing it an injustice. In this, <laughs> in, in the, no, no, genuinely, because I think l losing the salt—it's a very no. It's clear. It's it's okay. It's not really oh, sure. yeah, no, no, them no, anymore. No. Whereas this is no, no. This is far more nuanced. <laughs> um, I love the, the the little twitch Connor's face makes every time I mention Buffy. Uh, but like, no, no. I, I'm comparing it not because. I, I'm, I'm comparing it to show the difference because I think you know, there's, there's, there's some base level thing you can compare it to in a, in, in a way, but you're right, there is more of a nuance here because this is more the breaking of a spirit. This is more the, the breaking down of a person to insanity. Yeah. Uh, and it's very different to that, but um, I compare... It's so different, it almost wasn't worth comparing. No, no, I think it is worth comparing because much like, much like vampires siring new people to become more vampires... This is your your space like grungy version of the reavers like try to create more reavers, right? This is uh, all right. So re reavers, they're space vampires. They kind of are, right? Do you want me to say it? I'll say it. <laughs> oh, it only took three episodes to get to this. But they're, they're, they're more vicious though, and I, I think like they feel more evil because that like because because like you say in buffy there's this like on off switch of they have a soul they don't and it's kind of this like okay they don't have a soul it's not oh we can redeem them you know here we yeah. have book going well they're kind of still people maybe we, we can't well, obviously yeah. we know they can't really but there's a reason why people think they can be redeemed why book is there going well you know they're still people yeah and hell yeah. maybe if we did get like five seasons of this show maybe there would have been a plot somewhere down the line of someone who did kind of like come back come from back. it like yeah it's possible that that totally could have been a plot for an episode or hell even a half of a season like that could, that could be a hell of a story if, if they wanted. it could have been yeah obviously we, we never got there so yeah. we, we we have to assume it didn't happen yeah so uh do i have any final notes here uh yeah actually literally the final thing i said at the the bottom was that uh, the closest we've, we've gotten to see to a reaver yeah uh and in fact yeah. it's actually the closest we get in the whole show we don't actually see one till the movie yeah uh so, but I, I, I like the restraint because I think it does feel, I, I think this is an element of because they knew they weren't on the pilot once they wrote this episode, that they wanted to do a Reaver thing so quickly. Because after this, there's not really any Reaver stuff. I don't, I'm very slightly. Quite a while, isn't it? Yeah. So I think they were showing restraint and just like spacing it out, like and saying, no, we'll yeah. come back to this every once in a while, though, but this growing threat. And it, it does feel a little jarring over the course of the rest of the season in the sense that we had it in one and then three it feels like, okay, this is going to be a thing, right? Yeah. I, I think then, this is just Downey Fox. No, it is. Being... It is. It's not really their fault. Yeah. It's just, it's 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 a little frustrating in hindsight of, okay, now 
it kind of it, expectations uh, are built if if you're watching this for the first time now and you're watching it in the correct order yeah you might be going oh reavers that's going to be a big thing and it kind of is but not right away yeah um so you know uh what did you like the episode did you like the episode did you like the bush back yeah i do and it's pretty good um so I, say, I like all the reaver stuff i like all the 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 first half i think i like more um with the the mystery and the mystique of what's going on and uh you know going over and searching the, the derelict ship i like all that stuff yeah no i mean the first half's got a good sort of horror vibe to it and then i think the second half i mean it still keeps that because you've got the the the, the, the i'll call him the proto reaver uh yeah uh like that, that keeps there but i think the the interviews that that montage uh and so, so even in this episode where, where I'd, I'd argue this one's more plot focused than say the last mm. one there's still some good good character beats uh kind of throughout yeah, to uh set up i'm actually just checking out what the next episode is because uh yeah well you don't remember off the top of your head i remember on my head and imdb have it in the wrong order <laughs> uh, of course they do no i've got it i've got my i've got my blue okay i've got my thing yeah Easy enough. Uh, the next one is uh, Shindig. I don't remember it from the title. I'm sure I remember it within you know a minute of starting the episode. I'm using only from memory. This is my least favorite episode. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, brace yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, like uh, it's Shindig then safe, and then it's our Mrs. Reynolds, then Janestown. Um, whereas they've got. Or Mrs. Reynolds and Janestown as the next two episodes. Because of course, of course they do. They do. <laughs> but uh yeah. So it, that's why it's confusing because there's like the, the air date order and then there's the, the actual the proper order. order. Yeah. Production order as it's typically referred to. Well we don't normally have to think about it for most shows now because uh they don't pull this shit. Most networks are pretty reasonable. Yeah, they don't pull this shit anymore, so yeah. It's fine. Um but yeah, that's uh that's bushwhacked. So three episodes in it's going well. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see you next time for more Firefly. Uh, obviously, it's worth mentioning all the things we do that you may be interested in. Me and Connor have been working our way through Star Trek from the very beginning. We've finished the original series. We're at a time, by the time this has gone up, we should actually have just finished season one of uh, The Next Generation. And we'll be starting mm-hmm. next, season two in the very near future, within like the next few weeks. So uh, go go check out that if you're interested in Star Trek. There's also classic reviews of the original Twilight Zone and Babylon 5 uh, in terms of the old sci-fi stuff. And then, of course, there's new shows and stuff to, to look at. Uh, and if you're interested in me talking about Buffy a lot more, uh, at the $5 tier on Patreon.com slash TV, you get a Buffy commentary every month. And I'm on season three right now. A uh, couple episodes out of season three. So if you want me to talk about Buffy for 45 minutes every month, <laughs> you can get that. Thrilling, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll have a good fun. There are other things you can get at that tier that are more worth your money. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. You can vote in things. You can vote in movie shows and things like that. And yeah, also, it's not just Pete rambling about Buffy for a bit. Yeah. Uh, the $1 tier, of course, you also get these already cancelled a week early as well as some other stuff and some exclusives. Uh, so go check that out if you want to help us and support the show and support the channel and everything we do here and uh, keep, keep the episodes coming. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. And, uh, I'll remember my outro uh, without thinking about One day, it. Yeah. yeah. And yes, uh, yeah, so keep watching Firefly and TV, guys. But curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs>